Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh We are from group 2 and the members is Safira Amalia, Tubagus Vicky and me Winanda Aprina We will present about needs analysis and the first presenter is me Okay, I will explain about needs analysis What is a needs analysis? The needs analysis is the very first step in the ADDIA analysis design, development, implementation, and evaluation instructional design process. The needs analysis identifies the core problems to solve, target audience, current state, desired outcomes, and training recommendation. A needs analysis set the stage to design and develop an effective instructional design experience. The needs analysis is one of the most crucial parts of instructional design, yet it is often overlooked and even skipped in an effort to save time. Research has demonstrated, however, that when the needs analysis pace is by pace, it ends up costing much more in the long run. What makes up a needs analysis? The most important ingredients of a needs analysis is the first, a great needs analysis identifies the core problems to be solved. Second, a great needs analysis describes the target audience of the training. The third, a great needs analysis lists the desired outcomes or goals of the training. And the last, a great needs analysis identifies existing performance gap and training content and provide training and performance improvement recommendation. Instructional design is conducted for a purpose. The purpose is to help produce a desired change. As with all phases of the instructional design process, there are various perspectives for how a needs analysis might be approached and carried out. In this chapter, we will explore a variety of perspectives held by instructional design experts regarding needs analysis. Additionally, we will discuss how to conduct a true needs analysis to help ensure that proper data are collected that will accurately inform how the instructional designer should process through the instructional design process. Finally, a number of different methods for evaluating whether the needs analysis conducted was successful as described. Needs analysis and overview. It is generally the job of an instructional designer to help determine exactly what the change is that needs to occur, the instructional designers come to come into an environment and determines what needs to take place based on what is going on in the environment. Instructional designers use a needs analysis process to get at the source of the problem in order to do this specific information is needed. This information is gathered by the instructional designer through various means such as interviews, of observation, and review of available artifacts. The information gathered is then used to inform how the rest of the instructional design process will be carried out. Needs Analysis Question A typical needs analysis attempt to provide information that will help answer the following question. The first, what is the change being requested, including who is being asked to change and what is currently taking place? The second, who is requesting this change? And the third, where will this change need to take place? The fourth, is instruction the most appropriate means for bringing about the desired change? It is the job of the desi instructional designer to find answer to this question in order to help design, development, develop, and implement an elegant solution. One of the is both efficient and effective is providing the appropriate change. Formal and informal needs analysis. Needs analysis plays a critical role of at the beginning of the instructional design process because it helps an instructional designer identify identify and problem the need to be solved. Needs analysis provides information that allows an instructional design to get the core of the problem. If little or nothing is not about the problem, then a full-scale needs analysis is necessary. There are situations, however, where instructional designer needs not does not carry out a full scale analysis because he or she is broke instructional design process at the stage where the client has already clearly determined what the problem is and has possibly even either identify why it may be occurring. In this case, the instructional designer does not need to conduct a formal needs analysis because information that would be gained from be from from doing so much likely currently exists and would be a waste of researchers. Okay, the next presenters, Safira Amalia. My name is 
Safira Amalia, I want to continue the next material about popular approaches to NIST analysis. There is a variety of approaches that in an instructional designer can util utilize for carrying out a NIST analysis. This section will discuss several of these approaches which have been developed by respected instructional design scholars. These approaches are worth examining as you begin to develop your own understanding of an approach to the needs analysis process. As you read the different approach, it is important to note that each approach uses varying terminology to refer to the needs analysis process. The second, the request for the desired change. This is an extremely important element to understand because uh, it will help you determine the type of intervention that might need to take place. The emotional and political climate of the situation and the level of support that is present um, that will most likely be needed for a change to take place. Uh, the third implementation location of the desired change in most cases it will be extremely obvious where the change will be needed it can be very helpful to visit the location where the change is to take place to help you gain a solid understanding of the environment and the infer the intervention once you have the appropriate data that allows you to understand the entire context that the desired change who is re requesting the change who is being asked to change and where the change need to take a place it is time to determine if interaction is the most appropriate in intervention you will need to answer the following question is instruction the most appropriate means for solving the problem or bringing about desired change evaluate evaluating the success of a needs analysis this formative evaluation activity helps ensure that you are gathering a accurate data by presenting the client with opportunity to provide feedback how often the communication should take place is based on the nature of the project and the availability of the client there is no typical answer however it is good practice to communicate at least once a week with your client it is important to realize that it can be difficult to communicate with some client on a consistent basis. Need analysis and the instructional design process. A needs analysis is critical in helping the instructional designer determine what instruction needs to be developed or if instruction is even necessary to help bring about a desired change. No matter what approach you take, complete, completing a needs analysis should help you answer the following question. What problem exists or what change is being requested? Who is being asked to change? What is currently taking place with the individual or individuals being asked to change? Who indeed identify the problem or is requesting this change where will the solution or change need to take place is instruction the need analysis proced procedure and need analysis is conducted by using various data gathering tools to help answer fundamental question for the first determining the desired change you will want to find out information that can help you answer the following question what problem exists what change is being requested who is being asked to change what is currently taking place in this environment with this individual or individual it is important to not 
that not all instructional design projects are this straightforward. On occasion, you may be asked to come in to an organization to observe what is taking uh, 54 needs. And learner analysis, please, and determine the type of change that needs to take place. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, my name is Bagus Bekiarensa and I'm from BB4. And today I would like to present my material from the next from the previous center uh, about determining the desired change. The first step in the needs analysis is to determine what change is being requested. As mentioned earlier in this chapter, desired change could be in behavior skill or attitude La to answer it can help you to answer the following questions like WH questions such as uh, what problem exists or what change is being requested who is being asked to change what is currently taking place in this environment with this individual or individuals and typically the client who hired you will be able to provide you with the necessary information or access to the information needed to answer these questions. And in most cases, the client will specifically tell you what change is desired and individuals who are being asked to change. On occasion, you may be asked to come into an organization to observe what is taking place and determine the type of change that needs to take place. The request for the desired change after developing a clear understanding of the existing problem or the change being requested, it is important to understand who is asking for the change. This is an extremely important element to understand because it will help you determine the type of intervention that may need to take place, the emotional and political climate of the situation and the level of support that is present and that will most likely be needed for a change to take place. To understand of these elements, you will need to answer the following questions such as uh, Who identified the problem or is requesting this change? This information is generally e easy to obtain. It is often the desire of the client who hired you to have the change occur. And it is important to keep in mind that there may be additional stakeholders who might be interested in having the change. Next question is, uh, where will the solution or change need to take place? And again, the client is the best source of information to answer these questions. In most cases, it will be extremely obvious where the change will be needed, like a school and a workplace. It can be very helpful to visit the location where the change is to take place to help you gain a solid understanding of the environment. The intervention once you have the appropriate data that allows you to understand the entire context, the desired change, who is requesting change, who is being asked to change, and where the change needs to take place. It is time to de determine if instruction is the most appropriate intervention. You will need to answer the following questions like, uh, is instruction the most appropriate means for solving the problem or bringing about the desired change? The client will be relying on your expertise to determine this. There are no steadfast rule on whether instruction is the most appropriate intervention because its instructional design context is different. However, instruction is the most appropriate when a change in skill or knowledge is desired. It is important to keep in mind that you may want to offer more than one type of intervention to your client. Allow your client to be part of the decision-making process, but as previously mentioned, know that your client will be relying on your expertise to make the final decision. A, pro a properly conducted need analysis contributes significantly to how successful the entire instructional design process will be. 
A thorough identification of the problem that needs to be addressed will lead to an effective and efficient solution being developed.